What is going on GBA? I am The Confusion and welcome back to the first live analysis for the semifinals of the GBA Season 8. And of course, I am not alone with the live analysis. I'm here with my good friend Zelix. So hey, GBA fans, it's Zilix here and I am very excited to get into this battle. Yeah, this is a very anticipated battle from you guys and of course from us because we have the San Diego Chimp Chargers up against the Kansas City Giraffe Chiefs. This is such an exciting game. I am really looking forward to how this is going to turn out because this is the game that's going to decide two teams that have been doing phenomenally this season, who we know have done phenomenally in their past history. So seeing them come back together is really interesting and the fact that they have played before really spices this up. But I want to ask you, Zilux, what do you think of Team Preview right off the bat? So as you mentioned, these two did face off previously in the season, and looking at Jolt's team, it is very similar to that first team. Obviously, the sets may be different, but we are looking at strictly the same composition, and that's mainly because if it if it works, why change it? You know, looking at Envy's side, the biggest difference is I see we no longer see that double regen core that we saw last time, and we also no longer see the alone Raichu. The biggest reason I can think for this is uh, not allowing the Gardevoir to abuse the Trace and have a very good matchup like it did last time. I agree. The Alolan Raichu um, was a little, it wasn't really that effective because of that Gardevoir. And the fact that Gardevoir has two ways to really work around it, whether he packs the Assault Vest or the Scarf Trace, really makes it challenging. Again, we don't see the Amoongus because it wasn't effective. It was kind of just substitute fodder for the Celesteela, and Celesteela was a huge issue last time. So we do see MV learning from his mistakes in that sense. But this is a really interesting game. We have a lot of really cool Pokemon on the field like Magmortar. Uh, watching from the team builder, that thing is a belly drum set. So I want to see how that thing is going to go. Jolt bringing some more offense too uh, with things like the Sword Stance Natural Gift Ice on that Breloom, which is going to be really interesting to see how that formulates and works out in this match. Again, just to remind you guys, neither... I or Zilix have watched this matchup. This is all going to be live analysis from our end. So if you guys are excited, be sure to let us know by commenting, hitting the thumbs up, and getting pumped. So let's just jump into it, yeah? All right, I am clicking play. The battle video is loading. We are going to see both teams lead off in a moment here. What do you think we're going to see coming out on the Chim Charger side and also the Jirachi side? Well, both sides look like rocks could be very effective. So Aerodactyl, Empoleon, Seismitoad, those things could come out. And looking at it, we do see the Empoleon versus the Seismitoad. Obviously a more favorable matchup in terms of typing for the Jirachis. We are going to see that Empoleon get switched out. We'll most likely see the Stealth Rocks here. He may go for the Earthquake play right away. And he is going to go for that. And the Savali should be able to take that pretty nicely, uh, depending on its set. Let's see. Yeah, not doing too much damage there, so probably a pretty good play for Envy not risking that Empoleon too early on. Yeah, that could have been very dangerous, especially since rocks could be could play into a large part of this game. We do see the Aerodactyl come in on that Seismitoad switch out as uh, I just said Arceus. <laughs> as the Sil Valley is gonna parting shot out. Just a safe middle ground play that's gonna allow Envy to get some uh, momentum in his favor. Yeah, had the Seismitoad stayed in, the parting shot still would have worked out, and this gives him the opportunity to go in the Gligar. We may see the rocks uh, be set up this turn. Uh, we are going to see a taunt, actually, which is going to potentially stop those stealth rocks. Let's see what the Gligar goes for, and is going to be the Ooh. knockoff instead. <laughs> So that taunt really ineffective as he's going to lose the Eye of Papa Berry. That's a lot of HP he's about to lose if it ends up uh, working out that he goes down to that HP. But Aerodactyl setting up rocks on a Pokemon that can probably defog, but we are going to see the U-turn out. So Envy very big on momentum this matchup. Yeah, uh, he won't be able to defog though because there was that taunt, but had he stayed right. in and maybe stalled for a bit, he could have. We are going to see the Empoleon, uh, which is hashtag best defogger. He may go for that there, threatening out that Aerodactyl with a potential water move, uh, getting rid of those rocks early, or he may set them up uh, on his own side. Yeah, it looks like Jolt not trying to risk any berry uh, going for an Earthquake or anything like Scald. Nice Beam is going to come out, not doing obviously too much to the Seismitoad, but that is going to allow him to kind of see its investment, and he's going to go for a Grass Gnaw, getting big damage off on Seismitoad, as it's just going to go for a immediately Scald. Maybe a little bit of an overpredict there, going for the Scald, taking a lot of damage from that Grass That was a critical hit it's too, a crit! and that did absolutely <laughs> nothing. nothing. Empoleon no. is going to be switched out yeah. though. So yeah, into the top oh, of wow. Coco. This is a bit switching. of a risky play. What's going to happen here? That's very risky. 
Is he I gonna mean, losing, quake? Losing Coco could be detrimental this matchup. No, wow, he's gonna switch he out. Yeah, does not wanna switch. does not wanna go down to the grass knot. Crazy and we are going play. to see the Celesteel, which is a very good position for Envy. Wow, that was an amazing prediction. I'm sure maybe he was predicting something, uh, you know, Jolt maybe predicting something like the Gligar to come in. We're going to see Natured Madness, uh, which will bring the Coco probably, or sorry, the Seismitoad low enough for maybe a Hidden Power Grass if it's packing that, or a Dazzling Gleam, or a Brave, a brave Bird, bird. <laughs> which go. should be able to take <laughs> this thing out unless it's extremely defensive, but even then, uh, yeah, it is not living that, and that is going to be the first KO of the battle. That's the first one, and being that Coco is physical, this matchup is going to give it um, some maybe some issues against the Hydreigon, being that it's, it might not be carrying the Dazzling Gleam, but we'll see how that turns out. So the Aerodact gonna gonna come in. This is kind of a speed tie in terms of their base speed, but Jolt actually pulling a double into the Breloom, perhaps predicting something like the Gligar or Empoleon, but no, uh, you know, Envy is gonna go for that Wild Charge and get some damage off on that Breloom. Even with that resistance, Breloom is still taking a lot and is not going to want to stay in to get hit by a Brave Bird as well. We are going to see that Aerodactyl hitting the field once again, most likely to resist the Brave Bird. But at this point, the Draw Chiefs are just taking a lot of damage from this Tapu Koko. And Envy doesn't really have to predict because even if he's resisting these attacks, they're still doing a lot of damage. Now, while he is doing a lot of recoil to himself, putting this pressure early on is going to be very important. I mean, the double switch he made earlier on against the Celesteela put him in a fantastic position to have this Coco do a lot of damage to his team, as well as some over-predictions that Jolt made. Yeah, we are going to see the Coco get swapped for the Gligar. Uh, maybe this Aerodactyl will, yes, it will go for the Earthquake this turn. Obviously, the Gligar is going to avoid that. Very good position for Envy. He is going to get taunted here once again, uh, but he may know that was coming and go for a knockoff or potentially a U-turn. We That's are going to see did. the knockoff, which won't do too much due to the loss of item, but this Aerodactyl is basically dead at this point. And uh, this is also life. when, right, this is also when the Aya Papa Berry could have come off, but he went for the taunt instead and got lost uh, the berry to the knockoff. Seeing that this Gligar is not really going to defog and is just getting damage off. Envy going to make a double switch and into this Empoleon. Hopefully no Earthquake comes out, or that would be a problem. Jolt is going to go for the Rock Slide, and that is not going to do too much damage to this Empoleon. We'll see what happens. Are we going to see an Aqua Jet here, or is the Aerodactyl going to be swapped out and preserved? No, there is going to be the Earthquake, and if there is a Shuka, no it cannot pop because of Unnerve. So right. that Empoleon is going to go down, and both water types are now off the field. That is a critical hit. I don't know if that mattered, though. Right, that that's tricky. Maybe not. It was around 55-ish percent health. It really just depends on how heavily invested that Empoleon was. But Gligar, very safe to come back out against this Aerodactyl and kind of just wear it down with knockoff. If it has Roost, this is probably where he might go for that. We'll see what happens though. Knockoff is gonna come out and probably pick off this Aerodactyl, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I think knockoff was the, uh, the better play because there is the chance where he taunts again and you don't get the Roost off, or there's the chance he switches and you p can potentially knock off an item. Uh, we are gonna see a Draco Meteor though. This should be able to pick off uh, this Gligar. And now it's not looking too great for Envy as he is gonna lose uh, two of his very defensive mons here. However, due to that special attack drop onto the Hydreigon that gives him a opportunity to bring out one of his offensive mons and potentially claim a kill here. So his, uh, I was gonna say Arceus again. The Sylvali Dragon does come out and obviously it's going to threaten this Hydreigon. He is not gonna stay in with a negative two special attack Hydreigon up against this Dragon type. Cele uh, Celesteela, very safe. And the Defog is actually being packed on the Sylvali when um, Jolt probably thought it was on that Gligar or, or the, the Empoleon, Empoleon. Both of them down. <laughs> right, that's crazy. We are going to see the Flamethrower, which probably won't be doing a whole lot to the Celesteel. There is a chance of a burn. Uh, we are not going to see it, and the Celesteel will get off the Leech Seed. So this is probably a winning match for the Celesteel uh, if it's carrying something like protect. Substitute. It also has substitute, uh, Leftovers. Right. Yeah, so this is not going to be a winning battle. He might not even Pardon Shot expecting something like the uh, Substitute. He might just attack or even a Protect. So this is actually going to be an interesting play on Envy's end predicting. So he is going to go for the Pardon Shot. Yeah, I think it's probably the best move to drop the stats and go into something like the Coco that could take care of a substitute or potentially even the Hoopa, which would, uh, and we are going to see that Hoopa coming out now, uh, which can hit behind a substitute if we do see it, but Jolt is going to predict the swap double out and go for seed. the double each seed. That's going to be great. I mean, Hoopa and Bounce still has no switch-ins. He might try to make a switch-in into the Hydreigon or take the hit. Uh, I believe this Hoopa is going to be bounded, uh, uh, banded from the team builder, so it's going to do a lot of damage to honestly whatever is going to want to come in. 
and we are going to see the Hyperspace Fury. Uh, let's see how much damage this does to the Celesteela, doing, wow, wow. nearly 80, maybe 90% even. Uh, that's a lot of damage. The defense drop, though, not going to be affecting much as we are going to see the special attack here, and Hoopa's Unbounce high special defense is going to allow it to take that very nicely, and there's the special defense drop, so forget what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's still not going to be a big deal because Hoopa is yeah. outspeeding, and even if this thing tries to set up a Protect or a Substitute, which is probably why he went into this thing, Hyperspace Fury does go through both of those moves, which makes Hyperspace Fury in this, you know, event a very good play. Yeah, and we are going to see that Celesteela going down, so now very big defensive mons from both sides are going to be lost. Uh, I'll, I, I would expect that we'll most likely see either the Hydreigon or the... Uh, we are going to see the Hydreigon come back out, which most likely can claim a kill here. And, Anything uh, like, yeah, because of that Spadef drop, he doesn't just have to click U-turn, maybe even a Draco or Dark Pulse could take it out, so that makes switching into this thing a little bit more trickier. There is going to be the Dark Pulse, uh, this Valley should be able to take one, no, there is that, going to be a critical a hit. Uh, unsure as to whether or not that mattered, however, the second one most likely would have taken it out anyways. Right. Uh, so I don't think it matters in the long run, but we are going to see the Hoopa come back, so that may be revealing that it's Choice Scarfed. Here comes the Draco Meter, it should be able to take one without that special defense drop, let's see. I mean, the Hydreigon first off revealing that it's not Scarfed could be very big information for stuff like Coco. Um, but he's gonna go for the Ice Punch, make a solid hit, and maybe even pick up a kill right now. And he exactly is just going to clean knock out the Hydreigon, which is a huge threat. Uh, could have been very threatening to that Magmortar later in the game, or also the Tapu Koko if it's not carrying a uh, super effective move to hit it. We are going to see the Gardevoir come out. This is most likely going to be an easy pickoff for that Gardevoir, and it is just going to go for the Moonblast and take out the Hoop Unbound. What scares me, though, is knowing that this Gardevoir is Scarfed and it's locked itself into Moonblast might give this Magmortar the opportunity to Belly Drum. We are going to see Hida hit the field. Are we going to see a Belly Drum? Let's see. The Gardevoir is going to be the swapped out, draw. so if there's a Belly Drum, this could be very interesting. Uh, the Breloom could have the opportunity to Spore it. Uh, it all depends on speed. We are going to see that Belly Drum. There and, it is. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if Jolt was expecting this one, but uh, it, Hida that's is crazy. definitely living up to its name. It is going to pop that berry. berry. So yep. that's going to make it very, very like bulky in the sense that nothing is, except even a Mach Punch is not going to be able to take this thing out. And this is going to give him the opportunity to click Flame Charge. Which will increase that speed. Uh, will it be enough for the Gardevoir? We will see momentarily. But that Breloom is without a doubt going to go down. I mean, this is still very scary because the Gardevoir can still do a lot of damage with stuff like Psy Shock, and I don't remember Coco's HP, but I'm not sure if it'll be able to even take one if this thing is Scarfed. Yeah, the Coco did get weakened a little bit. Wow. However, the Magmortar is going to outspeed, going for that Flame Charge, plus six. Gardevoir is very low defense, and, and it is it. not taking wow. it. Wow. Envy is going to win, what is that, 2-0 against Two Joel? 2 That's crazy the magmortar being um not only a belly drum set and set up in the right uh time against a scarfed gardevoir but also the fact that he was able to click flame charge against breadloom raise its speed to outspeed a scarfed gardevoir i mean that was crazy on mv's end because it could have been something like a trick room set that we've seen before from jolt so the fact that he expected the uh the scarf over even an assault vest set was very very crazy prediction on mv what do you think I mean, that battle was, it, it started off relatively textbook, you know, Envy was making some offensive plays with his Tapu Koko, both teams were trying to either set up rocks or keep them off their side of the field, but then as we got into the later part of the match, things just started happening rapid fire and uh, ended in a very spectacular way with that belly drum, Magmordar. I agree, and I mean, there were various things Jolt had to, you know, protect himself against those things, but an early prediction where the Tapu Koko was switched in against the incoming Celesteela put him in a position to do a lot of damage to things like Breloom, do things to uh, do a lot of damage to things like Aerodactyl, which could have potentially stopped that Magmortar if uh, it had enough HP to where Mach Punch didn't kill, but there was a lot in this matchup, especially with the taunt, not, uh, you know, predicting the wrong defogger. I mean, there are four defoggers that Envy could have brought on this team in particular, and, you know, Jolt just predicted the wrong one, was def uh, taunting the Gligar, and didn't really work out because he was able to get off the rocks with Sylvalia, which was, again, huge for making sure Magmortar didn't take too much damage from maybe a crit or a high roll mock punch. Yeah, and so with that, that is going to mean that Envy will be moving on to the finals and Jolt's 
first season of the main league will be ending here. It was definitely a very good run for Jolt. Uh, he was dominating the league for the majority of the beginning. Had a little bit of a, a low swing uh, towards the end of the season, but definitely ended strong and obviously making it to the semifinals. And, you know, losing 2-0, it's not like he got totally swept or anything. And a uh, very, very good competitor. And I am excited to see uh, what he has for the future and obviously excited to see how MV is going to do in that finals matchup. I agree. I mean, deja vu. This is MV's second time in the finals. Last uh, last season, he was also in the finals <clears throat> against, I believe, Septile MC, and now he's going to be in the finals against either Chimpact or Gator. So stay tuned tomorrow to see how that game turns out. Again, we have not seen that match, and that's going to be really exciting to see who we are going to see in the finals. I mean, Jolt, a great showing. He had a, an amazing outstanding performance this season his first season in the main GBA season so that is really exciting and of course MV someone we've known for a very long time to do really well in the draft league format again showing that he can prove himself in the format so if you guys thought this was an exciting match let us know and we will see you guys tomorrow for the second semi-finals matchup between Chimpact and Gator peace